programmed by enthusiasts, not accountants. This is Get Ready to Rock Radio. And here at Get Ready to Rock, we're saying uh, a very warm welcome to a legend who is Jeff Pilson. Hello, Jeff. Hey, great, man. How are you doing? <laughs> are you often called a legend? Uh, not not often. That's kind of a new, that's kind of a, I guess, um, well, what a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, nice. I'm called a leg end, but never a legend. Oh, right. <laughs> now, you're currently touring in the USA with uh, Jenny and uh, Night Ranger as part of the, uh, the package there with Foreigner. And we're talking to you today specifically about the new album, Acoustique, and also about a Acoustic and more, the expanded version. And uh, I noticed, Jeff, that you've uh, produced this new album. Is that a new departure for you? Well, not really. I mean, I've been producing o- over the years, and they've. Uh, I've been kind of producing the audio on some of our live stuff, on, on our live, actually most of our live stuff, since I've been in the band. This is the first time I've gotten to produce kind of a, a creative venture, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> so it was a huge thrill for me and lots of fun. And, you know, I just, I'm so excited about the record. I just, I mean, I, I'm just so pleased with how it came out and the response we're getting has been fabulous. So I'm just real excited right now. I really, really am. Now, what guided you in the choice of songs? Because you obviously troll the, um, you know, admirable back catalogue of Foreigner. Was there anything that guided you? Did you focus in on the, the most popular songs? That wasn't really the focus. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's, part, it's subconsciously always kind of there. You, 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 know, you want to make sure that the popular songs are covered in some form or another. But it really came down to what lent itself best to the acoustic treatment. <clears throat> and uh, so, um, and on some of them, you know, we, we kind of challenged ourselves a little bit, you know, putting a little bit of a swing treatment on Cold as Ice and some other things, um, you know, and uh, so it was, it was really driven by what seemed to feel right acoustically. Most of the record, um, we, we cut the basic bed of tracks, you know, which was mix acoustic, by 12 string, Tom's acoustic, and Kelly singing along, we did in New York at a studio called Sears Sound, which used to be the Hit Factory. And it's just a great studio. I mean, a lot of the jazz records of the 50s were made there. So it was a great room where we could play live and just kind of get a vibe with each other. And so we literally went in there for a week and just played different songs and experimented with different things and and saw what worked and what didn't work. And that's kind of how we ended up with uh, the track selection. And is there any one track, Jeff, that you think worked particularly well? Well, there's several. Um, I mean, I am very excited about the Cold as Ice version because I got to play stand-up bass on it for one thing, which was very, very cool. Hmm. Uh, Tom Gimbel does some amazing sax work on it that really, really brings it up to a new level. Um, I'm very excited about the song Flame Still Burns because we got to record a real string quartet, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, and, it, you know, it, Waiting for a Girl Like You, I know that's one of Mick's favorites just because it seems like we captured a whole new vibe and kind of gave the song a new lease on life which is really really fun to do when you have a song that whose original recording was such a classic get ready ready to to rock rock radio radio. music you want to hear you know to come back and do something that really gives you artistic satisfaction that's that's a high accomplishment so there's a lot of highlights on the record i i mean i could go on and on but um let's just let's just say i think it plays well as an entire package you know you can play the whole thing and i think it listens down tremendously well from start to finish now we mentioned the uh, expanded version acoustic and more um this is the version with a bonus dvd and the re-recordings of some of the classic back catalogue now there's been a tremendous amount of recycling of foreigner back catalogue as you know over the years with uh, several compilations why did you choose to re-record the classic hits in this way with the new lineup you know, it was uh, a part of it was kind of fan. Uh, I don't want to say pressure, but fan fan request. You know, fans often said, you know, we just love this version of the band. Uh, we love how you guys are doing the songs. We'd love to hear it on a record. Now, you know, it's nothing. I mean, let's let's face it. The original recordings recordings are classics, and it's not taking away anything from that. But I think the fans just wanted to hear. This version of the band, and in particular, I mean, with Kelly singing them, they wanted to hear recordings of us doing the songs with, you know, like I say, this version of the band, Kelly singing. So we kind of responded to that, and it just seemed like some, it was fun to do. Um, 
and it just it just kind of happened, you know, very very naturally. Because listening to those recordings, I mean, in some cases, it's almost like, I know you haven't done this, Jeff, but um, it's so close to the original in terms of the backing tracks. It's amazing, really. I know. Hmm. I know. Well, you know, the thing is, we are very much students of the band, and of course, you know, Mick Jones plays like Mick Jones, so he's going to be Mick Jones no matter what he does, but... Um, but, you know, the rest of us are all such students of those recordings, and, and we are such fans of those recordings that we just couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, part of the other thought was, is we wanted it to be, um, the, there had been talk that, you know, maybe we could even uh, get some of these songs played on the radio, and, and that, you know, the closer they sound to the original might help, might actually help that. So there was a little bit of thought to that, but most of it, most of it was just, you know, we we wanted to honor it as best as we could. We wanted to modernize some of the sounds. You know, the drum sounds are a little more modern, a little punchier. Um, but uh, for the most part, we wanted to stay true. Now, we've played Waiting for a Girl Like You, and I think, um, as is the whole album, it's a showcase for the wonderful vocals of Kelly Hansen, who's really consolidated his position, I think, this year with the band. I should say, Jeff, we saw you on the Journey Sticks tour in the UK in June, and I have to say, your performance as part of that package was one of the highlights for me of the year. It was a marvellous gig. Um, well, thank you. I, I, which show did you see? Uh, it was the one in Manchester. Oh, oh uh, yeah. We, um, you know, i, I got to say, we, we ha- we've had a really good response to this whole tour we're very very excited about how how it's been working and it, it's been fun you know getting to play for the crowds that we're playing with and you know getting to play for journey's audience and so yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun and we're, we're getting a, a great response and we're we're really really excited about that now kelly uh, jeff he he joined i think a year or so after you around about 2005 joined in March of 05. March of 05. Now, when did you personally um, realize that he was the, the singer for the band? Uh, the day he came down to the audition. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, actually, I've known Kelly for years. Um, you know, I knew Kelly in the 80s, um, and you know, we were in, you know, kind of, you know, comrade bands, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but um, but I, I, I never realized how well he'd be able to sing this music until I heard him. When he came down, I heard a tape of him singing this stuff, and it was very, very impressive. Uh, but, then, um, but then when he came down and played, and you could see how effortless it was and how natural it was for him, um, there was no question. There was absolutely no question that this was the guy. Get ready to rock radio. Now, coming back to Foreigner, uh, is there any reason why you chose not to include so much of the current album, Can't Slow Down, um, in both the recent set lists and also this new package? I think there's only perhaps two uh, new tracks, uh, two um, tracks from the current album, uh, one on the DVD and there's one on the acoustic CD. Was there any reason for that? Um, well, you know, part, there is partly the, the fact that, you know, when... When all is said and done, you know the, the the greatest hits are kind of you know the 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 biggest draw for the band. So that's kind of what you tend to draw from. Um, but and and as far as the the shows in the UK, um, you know we only had sixty minutes, so you know you <laughs> kind of have to you want to you want to keep it to what's familiar, and you want to go out there and and knock them dead. Um, we do when we do our own sets. We do play a couple songs off the new record, and. Um, and we, you know, we do have some other stuff that we've recorded from the new record that might be coming in subsequent discs or updates of the the package that we have. So um, there there is more to come. But you know, let's face it, uh, you know, when you have 16 top 30 songs, like Foreigner has, um, that's that's a hard legacy to. Uh, to, to stand up to and you, you know you kind of got to do it justice ah now talking about um the future really with foreigner i mean are you thinking now about the next studio album you know we haven't started speaking of that yet um we we know that we've got you know a big year ahead of us um acoustic just came out and you know we work really hard when we work on a record i mean we I mean, some of this record had to be done on the road, and you know, while you know, while we were t- 
touring, we were listening to mixes, and I mean, it was it was pretty crazy. So it's a little too soon to talk about that yet. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we we know, we do know that there are more songs that we recorded for acoustic that, in some form or another, will probably materialize in the next year. We'll we'll, we'll have to finish them off, but um, you know, there's there's more stuff coming. Oh, that's great. And uh, finally, Jeff, what about your own musical aspirations? You've had great success, as we've mentioned, with two major bands, really, the last uh, 30 years or so. Is there anything else you'd like to achieve personally in music? Well, you know, there's always that. I'd love to write that classic song. There's that. There's that. Um, you know, I don't know if the forum is there for that much anymore, but... Um, you know, for me anymore, it's all about just playing great music. And if I could be in a great band playing great music or even recording on my own making great music, I'm very, very happy. The aspirations aren't as grand as they were when I was younger. It's more about just day-to-day what musically gets me off. And right now I know I'm in a great band that makes great music every night. And, um, you know, when we when we go to record, we make great music. So, I, I you know, that's a, a great starting point. Um, you know, I mean, I'm probably going to do something with George Lynch coming up soon. We're probably going to, uh, we've been, we've written together and we're, we're going to try and figure out a way to record that and, and bring that out. So, um, just like I say, it's, for me, it's day to day. What great music can I, can I make and, and how can I make it? I think we should say to listeners also that, you know, I was going back through the, um, certainly the Dock and Back catalogue and nearly all those songs are co-writes, aren't they? You, your name is there. You know, it wasn't just w- one person. It was certainly a, a good writing situation for us, that's, that's for sure. Yes. Well, look, Jeff, uh, thanks for your time talking to Get Ready to Rock and uh, all the very best with your own career and also, of course, with Foreigner and the new CD, Acoustic, and more. Well, well, thank you so much, man. It's been a real pleasure, David, and, and um, I just I really hope people get to enjoy the new CD as much as, as we have. <laughs>